Good afternoon folks, welcome back to uh, another episode of Advanced Higher Chemistry, Physical Chemistry this time, with people in the room. Say hello people. Hello. Our special guest stars are the 2021 uh, mm. Melbourne Superstars for Advanced Higher Chemistry. Um, what is a buffer? How does it work? That's what we'd like to tackle today. Let's start with um, what's in a typical buffer. And number two, how do they do that voodoo that they do so well? Um, how do they work? Let's answer one first of all, because it's relatively straightforward. The simple answer to that is it's a mixture of a, a weak acid. Weak, doesn't have a C in it. Weak acid. Or base. And a salt. Usually of the same acid or base. So a salt of that acid or base. Classic case... And done to death, I'm sure it would be something like ethanoic acid. So CH3COOH combined with sodium ethanoate. CH3COONA. Uh, the pH of that particular buffer or base. Actually, let's do a weak base comparison as well. Why not? Something like ammonia and ammonium chloride. That would be the corresponding one for a weak base. Or you could have an amine and a salt of the amine, which is probably more like the twist that the SQA would put on it. How do you calculate the pH of a buffer? Uh, let's see if I can pull this equation out of the deep, dark depths of my memory without cheating and going to the data book, which is where it is, of course. So learning it is pointless, but I like a challenge. pH is equal to, and the class get to laugh here if I get this wrong, of course, pKa minus the log of the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt. Square brackets, remember, the only time you ever get to use square brackets in your keyboard, unless you're a coder, um, but the square brackets in chemistry mean concentration. So the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the salt, take the log of that and then subtract the result of that from the pKa, which you get in the data book, of course, page, I can't remember, but you can find it yourself. So that's how you calculate the pH of a buffer. It's quite a complex calculation. I did see one example once in previous years where they actually just started with a pure weak acid, a certain volume and a concentration, and then in the question they told you that the, you added a, s a lesser amount of sodium hydroxide to it, forming the salt. That was a tricky one, because you had to work out the concentration of acid that was left, as well as the concentration of acid, that, sorry, of the salt that you produced. So uh, an easy two or three marks question there. Let's have a look at how they work, which is another good two or three mark question, depending on how the SQA have used them. So if we were to take our ethanoic acid molecules, which, of course, it is primarily molecules, because that's the definition of a weak acid. And you also have, you, they will ionize, but only to a tiny extent, producing ethanoate ions and hydrogen ions. Uh, and your sodium ethanoate it ionizes to form just sodium ions, which are not going to join this particular party. But the ethanoate ions are going to have an important role to play. Right, let's add some acid into this buffer. Some clumsy passing person, oops, spills a load of acid into the buffer. Oh, I'm a total idiot, by the way. I completely forgot to say what on earth a buffer is for. Uh, you need to sack me and get a better YouTube teacher. Um, a buffer is just a mixture which enables a constant pH to be kept, despite you adding small amounts of acid or alkali to that particular uh, mixture. I say small amounts, sooner or later you'll, you'll run out of spare buffer capacity. So, um, let's have a look at what happens if we throw in some hydrogen ions here. In other words, an acid. Now, hydrogen ions thrown into this mixture are going to combine um, with these loads and loads of ethanoate ions floating around, and they are going to clear off and form ethanoic acid molecules. Now, that in its, as you say it as that, as in words, is quite confusing because it sounds like you're making acid. Well, surely that's going to change the pH, but you have to remember that the equilibrium is mostly towards the molecular side very little towards the ionic side. So you are effectively hoovering up 
these hydrogen ions by combining them with this counter ion and making mostly molecules. So that means these are removed from the solution effectively and you don't change the pH. So, what about adding hydroxide ions then? If you were to dump in a load of hydroxide ions from, well, a bit of hydroxide ions from uh, a base. Well, you've got lots and lots of these molecules here. And what will happen is you will combine the H, you'll strip off the H there, the acidic hydrogen. It will team up with your hydroxides that you've tipped in and they will clear off to form water. So this time, this molecule here has effectively hoovered up your hydroxide ions. It's clever, clever chemistry. The ions hoover up the, uh, these ions here, hoover up the hydrogen ions, and these molecules neutralize your hydroxides. I won't be lazy. I'll do a weak base buffer as well, just to complete the, the full hand. Full house hand, sorry. It's been a long time since I played poker. Um, we've got ammonia and we've got ammonium chloride. The, the chlorides are also spectators in this particular game. Uh, the ammonia molecules will interact with the water to form ammonium hydroxide, uh, but again, that is mostly towards the molecule side, this equilibrium. So, what, what happens if we drop in our H plus this time? Um, our H pluses are going to... You could pause the video, of course, and try and work it out yourself. What, what are the two scenarios here? So if we drop the H pluses in, they are going to go and react with these. Um, and they will go off and form water. And of course, the hydroxide here is replaced. You know, every time... It's, I forgot to mention that in this one, by the way. Sorry, guys. I apologise. Uh, if we end up using up these ethanol ions, they can be replaced from this equilibrium here. So if we use up these hydroxide ions then they can be replaced from this equilibrium here. So these form water, and if you add hydroxide to this, you're effectively, you're effectively driving this equilibrium in this direction here. The hydroxide will combine with the NH4, and you'll get an equilibrium to form ammonia and water. And as I said before, this equilibrium lies mostly towards the molecule side, so now, these ions have hoovered up your hydroxide ions. And once again, your pH remains constant. I think that's all I want to say. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Just a quick one this time.